says, my name is Tom Snovotny. I am a senior computer systems analyst at Susquehanna Nuclear in Berwick, Pennsylvania, that is owned by Talon Energy. When I heard about GLPI, it was when I was searching for uh, inventory uh, for equipment from the uh, company I was working for at the time. They wanted to have uh, a way to show depreciation of all their equipment. So we were using a lot of the features that allowed us to calculate the pricing and depreciation value and then submit it for insurance purposes. Probably five, six years searching the internet and open source was probably a key word and looking to see what tools were available to me to see what I could utilize to get the job done. And we're moving to 9512 as soon as uh, our development is done with the additional plugins that we're developing. GLPI is uh, an essential tool now as part of if you want to find out information about the device, or as we call them, CDAs, critical digital assets that are in our plant. So you basically, if you need to find out certain pieces of software is on them, or if you need to just know where it's located, uh, we have all that information in GLPI. So then they just go to that as their resource to pull it up and find out. One of the biggest things we did was uh, specifically since you have in the program, you have the ability to see everything in rack mounted space. And well, here, not everything's in a rack. Some things are in panels, some things are in cabinets, some things are uh, on tables. So right away we realized, well, we still wanna have a graphical representation when you click on racks, but not everything's gonna be a rack mounted device. So we wanted to keep that workflow going for us. So what we did was with one of our plugins is allow it to use SVGs to make a graphical representation. So in the cases where you upload a SVG document and relate it to the rack, it automatically uses then the SVG. And then from there, it gives you a representation and then it utilizes the other features within GLPI to be able to click and add the device and relate it to the, the racks. So obviously when you do the rack, you get your visual representation that you normally get. But again, we don't always have it like that. So what we did was where you can load up an SVG and then you would just click on the piece of the SVG that would take you to the device for further information. And of course, you probably see the color changing in the background too. We have two nuclear reactors here on site. They're color coded. So unit one gets a blue color in unit two. So to help people make sure they're looking at the correct unit. We utilize both the uh, uh, running on the computers when we can. Uh, we got it done compiled, recompiled some of the bit to get run on some older equipment because we're a nuclear facility. We even have some older machines still running Windows NT. So there's some challenges there that we had to tweak the plugin to work with that, but we got through it. Uh, things in the nuclear industry usually don't happen as fast as out, out in other companies because if it's not broke, you don't fix it. So if it keeps running, there's a lot of legacy equipment here at the plant. So we utilize it. Uh, the flexibility of the program line for that, but then also the SNMP functions of the, the plugin to grab switches and firewalls. And we've even started to modify it to allow it to, uh, for equipment like uh, IP cameras and other things that weren't part of the base package that we've added to it. So it can interface with those and pull information from those devices using the SNMP, the MIB protocols and all, all of that information to get it pull that information because part of the requirements for our cyber security program and the nrc is to maintain baselines so we can prove that when we go out and have to interact with a device that we can prove that it hasn't been tampered with or changed from the previous time so we're using the it as a way to prove that it hasn't been changed since for the most part it was easy to get into Online documentation was very easy to get a hold of, and the framework is pretty straightforward. The number of assets we have, we have over 3,000 digital assets. 
in addition to that, our plugins uh, capture MVDs, uh, CVEs, and we have all of that in, in our system. So there's almost 200,000 CVEs in the system that then get associated with all of the 3,000 assets nightly. We have a process that just makes matches them up based on how we've implemented it and make sure there's no new ones or changes. Biggest things are for our cyber requirements. We, we have to maintain master software list, which GLPI natively does right out of the box with ease. And the plugin inventory plugin just allows us to easily, without human error, enter that information into GLPI. Products are going to software as a service or cloud-based services. The fact that we could download GLPI and a Linux distribution and get it running on premises is a big thing too, because now it too can have additional isolation that, and protection that the NRC and our regulations allow for. Is it's just being able to get in and play with it and manipulate it and and make it uh, when someone requests something or something's not quite clear on how it's uh, communicated on in the GUI. With, just change the code a little bit to make it more clear. So it's it's extremely flexible. And even with the language files and everything else, like I mentioned briefly in the presentation, it's just easy to change things up and make things easier for people to understand. Even something as simple as language, it helps big time. <laughs>